they find a solitary fisherman. A humble peasant walking through the mountains where he fits in inconspicuously, merging like a drop of water in the ocean of the Tao, the cosmic force that animates all things. Or a Taoist, sitting in contemplation on a rocky crag in the mountains. Oops, good thing he's immortal. The Mandarin's main purpose in painting was summed up beautifully by another famous landscape painter. He said, One approach to the Tao is by inner meditation alone. Another is through the beauty of the mountains and water. The beauty of Mount Hua, the very mystery of the dark spirit of the universe, all may be captured in a single picture. There is another reason why Chinese paintings look so unique. The subject matter. The various beautiful landscapes of China are found nowhere else in the world. Not only did Chinese artists look at the landscapes differently and use the tools of calligraphy to paint these landscapes, the landscapes themselves are different. Such as the great low soil central plains of China eroded to create incredible craggy mountain peaks, or the great karst formations of the Guilin Valley along the Li River. The scholar artists developed a very sophisticated technical vocabulary of brush strokes to describe these various landscapes of China. Early in the 10th and 11th centuries, the great masters of landscape painting would paint the craggy holy mountains of northwestern China. To paint the surfaces of boulders and mountain faces of Mount Hua, Fan Quan used the raindrop texture stroke to convey the impression of a mountain worn by thousands of years of wind and rain. The artist, Hua Xi, created the cloud-top texturing effect that captures the nature of the misty mountain landscapes of central China. Chinese artists represented these different environments by creating new brush strokes and formats to describe their new surroundings. In the year 1127, Tartars from the north attacked and overran the Chinese capital at Kaifeng and destroyed the Imperial Painting Academy. Over 6,000 paintings, masterpieces all, were destroyed. But the court managed to flee to Hangzhou on the southeastern coast of China, a setting that would change the course of Chinese painting forever. Ah, I found it. When the imperial court moved from Kaifeng in the mountains to Hangzhou in the Lake District, horizontal scrolls like this one began to become very popular because they were very suitable for showing the flat landscapes around the lakes. More popular, in fact, than the hanging vertical scrolls that have been used to depict mountains. Unrolling a hand scroll painting is a bit like watching a movie a visual journey through space and time with constantly changing scenery. The moody scenery around Hangzhou inspired the scholar Xia Kui to paint pure and remote view of stream and hills.
painters, like Xiaque, created new brush strokes to describe the landscapes around Hangzhou. Using the side of the brush and swept across to create triangular shapes, the axe cut stroke was perfect for painting the cliffs around the lakes. Rock faces are seemingly chiseled right out of the paper. They're hard, solid textures as palpable as granite. Around Hangzhou, the scholar painters use different texture strokes to produce radically different visual and emotional effects. Huang Kung Wang's dwelling in the Fuchun Mountains provides a classic demonstration of the hemp fiber stroke, which are soft strokes to suggest earthy hills. Within the soft, moist texturing is an overflowing sense of life. So what does make Chinese painting so distinctive? Well, it's three things. The unique landscapes of China, the origins of Chinese painting in brush calligraphy, and the unique culture of the scholar official artists that we know as Mandarins. Developed more than a thousand years ago, and brought to perfection by generations of master painters, Chinese paintings are far more than simple representations of what the eye sees. They seek to depict the essence of the subject, not its external appearance. When viewing a Chinese painting, accept the invitation of the artist to explore with him his experience of the fantastic landscapes of China, and pause to appreciate not only his skilled brushwork, but also the profound philosophies that inform his vision.